If you're seriously ill or critically injured. Ambulance service. Is the patient breathing? He's struggling to breathe. Very seriously injured. In some of the UK's most remote places. Oh, 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 I can't. Oh, yeah. Stay on the line and I'll tell you exactly what to do next. There's just been an accident on the M1 motorway. It's on fire and it's gone into the railway bridge. Your life is on the line. How far did he fall? About five metres. He's intubated and ventilated. You need some of Britain's most elite medics. Is there any serious bleeding? Yes, there is, yeah. Calm. Phil, legs, anything below my neck. We're in a remote location in the middle of the woodland. They've broken the back. The speed of the Yorkshire Air Ambulance can make the difference between life and death. For your discretion, take off. Fedus 9 lifted. Today, a chopper crashes. Immediate dispatch. Come on, get in! And both air ambulances are scrambled to the rescue. Not much left for it. No. Oh. A cyclist is fighting for his life after he and his partner are thrown into the air. I think I've broken my back, haven't I? And paramedic Paul is called to handle a reluctant patient. Let me get out of this thing and walk away, please. Thank I'd you. rather go in an ambulance than in a bloody helicopter. Ambulance services, the patient breathing. It's been a helicopter crash. Run, run, run. Immediate dispatch. Come on, get in. The adrenaline is pumping at the Top Cliff Air Base. <sighs> the chopper has crashed 30 miles away. Fuck a duck. Pilot Gary and paramedics Andy and James are heading for the airfield at Breton. Can you find out if 9 8 has gone as well? 9 9, Roger, 9 8 will also be attending. Andy's preparing for very serious injuries. If a helicopter goes down, you, you, you've got potential for lots and lots of uh, significant trauma. Element 9 9 receiving. 9 9, go ahead. 9-9, RRV on scene. 9-8 are also running. I've got Element 2-9 running from Lincolnshire, uh, saying 4, query 5. The helicopter has gone down from approximately 30 feet into the ground, over. Helimed 9-9 is one of three air ambulances now scrambled to the crash. So if we're first, I'll go forward, do a quick recce as long as it's safe. Uh, and I'll just get back to the air desk as soon as possible. Helimed 9-8, London. Ah, they're down. We got up, yeah? They're just landing. Helimed 98, the other Yorkshire Air Ambulance, has arrived just before them. You're going to be landing away from the crash. Everybody's out. Yeah, there's not much left for it. No. That's copied, landed down with. It's not looking good. Two ambulances are just arriving. Third of snow, nine landed. The incident happened in the middle of an open day at the airfield. The ex-military chopper was carrying five people. Right, Andy. I like Tony. Flying doctor Andy Poutney must quickly decide which casualties are most seriously yep. injured. Yeah. P2. P2. This gentleman here. Yeah. Back with you two seconds, all right? Do you want me to uh, assess that man there? Where's everybody else? There's five here. Yeah, OK. okay. Nah, these two here, isn't they? Hello. 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 My name's Andy. Hiya. Les was in the front passenger seat. He's shocked okay. and suffering from pain in Les, his chest. Okay. Do you know what day it is today, Les? Sunday. 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 Even witnesses are traumatised. I'm James, all right. Just gonna have a quick look over us anyway. Was, no, wasn't it? Wasn't it? no, that's fine. Who else was in it then? One, two, three. There's two over there. There's two over there. The pilot seems to have the worst injuries. Helimed 98's team are caring for him. Where are you hurting? Where's your main pain? Uh, lower back's a bit sore. Your lower back? OK, you want knocked out or anything like that? I have no idea. No idea? Just you can't really... Just, just a, a bang and then... Just really bang. quick, would it? Yeah. yeah. The impact was devastating, and the chopper's occupants have undergone the same G-forces. So, as I see it, it's yours is our priority. If we're going to fly anybody, that's probably their priority. OK, so, if you go... I think we'll stay with this one, Andy, from what Andy's saying. Uh, possible chest injury. So if, we, if you're happy, we'll stick with him. Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. Doctor. It's got a good lump there. 
I've asked him just to have a feel of it himself, and he says that's not normal. Do you want to convey? Yeah. Uh, yes, if, as long as there's no one else, that's no, more. No, no, that, no, no, right, no, okay. No. Dr. Andy has decided two of the patients will be flown to major trauma centres. Les will head to Hull, the pilot to Leeds General Infirmary, 25 miles away. I'll give him some pain relief and that and barred him. Les's chest injury is worrying, but only scans in hospital can pinpoint the cause of his pain. He's just taking shallow arrest, mate, with pain on chest. Give him some morphine and that. The team's pilots are planning their flights to hospital. They must avoid overloading one trauma centre. I'll take Rogan. Do you want me to? I'll clear the space for you, yeah. Morphine 1218. Les believes he's been very lucky. He's, he's, he's struggling with breathing just because it's a bit shallow, that's all. But spinal injuries are common in air crashes, and the team's taking no chances. I'll just take his, his head there. Just stand up nice and steady. <laughs> yeah, I know, mate, I know. My mate will guide you back well onto that, that bit on, on scoop, all right? Well done. He's being immobilised to protect his back. That's it, you're all right, you're fine. You've head, got, mate. You got a C-spine, mate, yeah? I have C-spine, should we just take the fleece off? Perfect. Slowly, he's being lowered onto a rigid spinal stretcher. We're going to lower Go on, I've got that, mate. I've got his arm, mate. All right. Trust, trust is nice, steady breath. Relax, relax. Nice That's and steady. That's it. That's it. Real steady. That's it. Well done, mate. That's well done, mate. Good stuff. You're all right. You're not going to fall anywhere. No, mate. I'm happy with that. You've got to be warm in a minute, mate. You're going to be like a pizza bag. Although he seems fairly stable at the moment, obviously we're concerned about that chest injury, so that's why we're going to the trauma centre. I believe uh, 9 8 is going to go to Leeds as well, which is why we're going to go its equal distance. Steady away. There are real fears for the pilot. He's very experienced and a friend of many of the witnesses. Feet first, so if you go feet first and then we come. Yeah. So the idea is trying to get the weight off as far as we can. If we pass them on, it's easier. <laughs> we on at that? Engine control, of course, we're confirmed. Confirm our act to fly and airwaves are down. About 095, 100-ish. Yeah. Les is taking off for the second time today. If he's worried, he's not showing it. But air crashes have a sobering effect on the air ambulance team. Yeah, it's quite worried because obviously we're in the same mode of flight. You know, we've got this gentleman who's just been involved in a helicopter crash and uh, now we've loaded him back onto a helicopter, but unfortunately we need to get him to the hospital because he has got a chest injury. It's not the first crash pilot Gary has seen, but none of them are pleasant. Could have been a lot worse. Yeah. Air Desk 99 on approach, Hull Royal. A full trauma team has been assembled at Hull Royal Infirmary to meet Les. In the next hour, he'll be subjected to extensive diagnostic tests. This gentleman's called Wesley. He's been in a helicopter front seat passenger. The aircraft is completely demolished. 60 miles away in Leeds, the same precautions are being taken for the pilot. The crash may still have very serious consequences for its victims. It's April Fool's Day at Air Ambulance HQ, but today's emergency is no joke. In a village near Barnsley, a man's fallen more than 30 feet. We've been responding to a, uh, a gentleman in his 50s who's fallen off a two-storey building roof. Sounds like he's got high blood pressure, which could indicate a uh, significant head injury. Uh, so we're going to go and uh, transport him to the main trauma centre. Blue lights, 12 o'clock. That'll do us. They're circling the densely packed streets of Thurnscoe, a former coal community. I mean, obviously you've got a big open, yeah. open field here, but you're going to have to travel. Pilot Steve has his work cut out finding a landing pad. Spend all bloody day going round in circles here. <laughs> it's like every bit of it, grass has got poles and the washing lines and stuff. OK, um, I'm going to put you on the junction there, down below us in the 12 o'clock, and I can see the car coming towards us. Do you want to get open the door and get the bugger to move out the way? He's moving. Clear to the right. Clear left. There you go, guys. Thank you. Okay. 
55-year-old John Mangum is in severe pain. He was working on a roof when he fell. This gentleman is John. He's fallen from the top of the scaffolding that's toppled over, which was level with the roof of the building. OK. Um, we don't know if he was knocked unconscious. It was unwitnessed. People right. just heard the noise. When Medics had to, to remove scaffolding poles that had come down with him. What we'll do is give him some TXA as well. Yep. All right. John's being given TXA, a drug that reduces internal bleeding. Face is swelling up, particularly around his eyes. He has opened them and he says yep. his vision is blurry, but he can see. OK, in both eyes? Both eyes, yeah. yeah. A first aider rushed to the rescue after hearing shouting. I think it's his grandson Ron Roof panicking, scratch, shouting for the lady that lives here. So I ran over, seen what were happening, run back home, got first aid kit, because they were all panicking, and obviously just tried to treat him as best I could till ambulance arrived. He was lucky to survive the fall, and paramedic Paul knows his patient's life is still in danger. Just keep your nurse still. Can you remember, can you remember falling? Yeah. Did you pass out or did you, did you go dizzy or did you, was it just normal fall? Normal fall. A normal fall. OK, and then can you remember landing on the ground? Yeah. Did you go unconscious at all? Can you then point that you can't remember anything? No. OK, so you remember everything? That... All right. So it was, it was in exactly the same position now as you when you turned up? Oh, all right, OK, yeah. John's daughter and partner have arrived. They're in shock. The plan is, your left arm, we're going to bring it up maybe towards your head. It is going to hurt you, and I do apologise. All the signs are John has a brain injury. That could explain the swelling around his eyes. Get him strapped onto the stretcher into the back of the wagon. He is in desperate need of a flight to hospital. That's had a ruptured patella tendon, or he's done his tibial plateau. Oh, not sure. But there's a problem. The chopper has attracted sightseers. We're on a junction and it's become fairly busy, so we've got local police out to try and control the traffic. Obviously, we're concerned that some cars might try and squeeze past us. As main good is when we take off, yeah. if we have to abort the takeoff for whatever reason, we'll be coming back here. Right, OK. So we need to make sure that everybody's well yeah. cleared of this. Right. Uh... Well, we're going to be a big one. <laughs> Right. I'm coming down here. Feet first. Feet first. Feet first. Feet first. Feet first. If you get feet in on onto the edge and then we'll lift him up and push right. him on. Paul's giving John's daughter all the reassurance he can. We'll look after him. All right. We're, we're happy with how he's at the minute. OK. He's talking to us, which is a good sign. All right. But his patient is critically injured. Time is of the essence. OK, guys, okay. we're lifting at uh, 1904. We're clear, right? At last, Steve's able to lift off. There's still clear left, clear to treat you left. Yep. John's going to be flown to the trauma unit at Sheffield Northern General Hospital, 15 miles away. It'll take just seven minutes and the chopper's speed might just save his life. It's fallen quite a significant distance. You need to be alert to him uh, deteriorating quite rapidly with a head injury. So far, all his numbers seem quite OK. I'm quite happy with that so far. He has got uh, a fracture to his wrist and a uh, lower right leg injury. Uh, we're also querying a pelvic injury, so we've put a binder on for that and treated him accordingly for some internal bleeding should it be uh, occurring. Neurologists and trauma specialists are awaiting Helimed 98's arrival. John's life could depend on the treatment they give him in the next half hour. The sun's out, and so are the cyclists in North Yorkshire. There's two cars just run over two bikers. On the system oh, bypass. Okay. Are they conscious? Oh, oh dear. No, they're both not moving. Okay, okay. Yeah, um, you've been required. We've got a male RTC cyclist run over by car. Back injury, can't feel legs. Two cyclists, two serious injuries near the Dales town of Skipton. Get the ketamine. Helimed 99 will have paramedics Matt Syrett and Sammy Wills there in 20 minutes. Arise is clear, 100%, 900 fuel. 
Engine controls, two left foot flying. Confirm, both foot flying. Uh, lifting. I believe two patients were identified. Is the other aircraft en route, Emma? Negative, the uh, second patient is suitable for the DCA. The gentleman that we're going for possibly has an open fractured leg and a loss of sensation um, of his legs. It's not the first time Sam is being called to an injured cyclist. There's been an explosion of uh, people becoming more healthy riding bikes, which is a good thing. But there has been a uh, proportional rise in, in uh, road traffic accidents with cyclists, unfortunately. Right at railway. Oh, right. Paramedics always think on their feet, but today Matt is making a medical judgment in mid-air. This patient away from us, Sam, is uh, looks in a worse condition. Okay, furthest away I'll go towards. It's critical they prioritise the most seriously injured patient. All right, guys, you clear out into the 12 o'clock. Londoner James Campbell was on a cycling holiday with his partner Sabina Gill. She too is hurt, but his injuries are the most serious. Hello. Hiya. Uh, we've got James here, 30 year old. Pleased to meet you, James. The couple were thrown 30 feet after a collision with a van. The pain he's complaining of is in the middle of his back, the altered sensation in his left leg. Their patient is confused. Very concussed still. Um, he's obviously taken a bit of a whack on his head. James, we're just going to have a little listen to your chest. Have I broken my back? But we'll take you to hospital to make sure. That's it. Do these arms hurt at all? Your shoulders? A little bit. Can you bring this one in? No. Why is that? I can't lift it. No. James is in severe pain, but it's the lack of feeling in his limbs that's most concerning. So it's a worry that the sensation has gone from his left leg now, whether that's just a trapped part of his cord. Um, it may just be the shock of the fall. We're just going to treat it as worst case scenario um, and then we'll get him off to major trauma centre, which is Leeds. From here. Motorists stop to help the couple after seeing the accident. We were just driving this way, coming towards um, the accident, and I just saw the two bikes go up into the air, just fly up, just like a big, you know, just two bikes together, and then they just went on the floor in just a heap. That's basically what we saw. Just going to give you some medication because we don't want you to start feeling sick, okay? How's the being there? She's fine, she's on the ambulance with the other paramedics. They're, they're helping her out. How far have you been cycling today? I have no idea. Oh. Sammy is concerned James may also have a facial injury. It could affect his ability to breathe. Are your teeth all intact? No. What's wrong with them? They're all over the place. OK. Right then, James, what we're going to do is put a little pelvic binder, that's so like a big fat belt that goes round your hips, OK? I think I've broken my back, haven't I? Well, you've got some pain there, and because you've got an altered sensation of your actual um, leg, what we're going to do is play it safe. Because I can't move my feet. OK. fall out. She's in the ambulance with the paramedics. Nice and gentle. Oh, that's, that's enough, that's oh. enough, that's enough. Push, push, push. Ah, fuck. Oh, that hurts. I'm sorry, bud. Is Sabina OK? James may be worried about Sabina, but there's a bigger problem. His blood pressure is dropping. He may be bleeding internally. Is one of you available to set up a, uh, a couple of TXAs just because his blood pressure is uh, fluctuating? If he's broken his pelvis, his life could be in real danger. He's complaining of um, severe low back pain. He has altered neurology left leg. Um, he is pale and sweaty. Believed not to have been KO'd, but he is very confused. Brilliant. Okie dokie, thank you very much. OK, then, James, we're going to fly you in the helicopter, OK? That's your partner just going off to the hospital as well. Okay. She is. Okay. His rescuers fear James also has a head injury. He's repeating himself a lot. Confusion can also be a sign of brain damage. Oh, my girlfriend. She's fine. You'll, you'll see her at LGI at the hospital, OK? He's all packaged. Uh, we're going to move into aircraft and then Leeds have accepted him. Although his girlfriend didn't trigger any major trauma, I do believe the crew have taken him to Leeds, so it's better for them both. Do you know which one his is? Okay, keep the weight off as best you can, best you can. He is very tall. Stand by. Am I, am I in a helicopter? 
You are, yes. Yeah, that's right, that's not good. Visor is clear 100%, 7.30 fuel. James is being flown 30 miles to the trauma unit at Leeds General Infirmary. Right, mess. Yep. My main concern for James is it's, it's multiple, actually. He has had a head injury, even though he was wearing a helmet. It's significant damage. He has got repetitive speech. Querying his pelvis, I'm giving him TXA. Um, it's a significant indicator when we think somebody's having a, a bleed or an internal bleed. 50 miles an hour versus a man in Lycra is uh, never very good. Three numbers, please. Doors, please. Safe box on the right. Experts in three major specialisms have been called to resus. London LGI. Orthopaedics and neurology consultants for his spine, vascular surgeons to track down the source of his internal bleeding. James is a 30-year-old, normally fit and well, hit from behind by a van. They've been thrown about eight metres, lower back pain significant, with some altered neurology to his left leg. Uh, initially could move it, but not moving at the moment, and is anxious about that. This will be a long day for the trauma team and their patient. OK, so we'll go through the challenge and response checklist then for the RSI. Yep. There's a training session at Helimed headquarters. Suction unit, ready. Yep, check. Lee Greenwood is one of the Air Ambulance team's most experienced paramedics. Drugs are in. He's treated gunshot wounds in A&E in South Africa and performed rescue work in earthquake zones. Tubes through the cords, thank you. Bougie out. But this weekend, he faces an outsized challenge rather closer to home. The Three Peaks Tower over Yorkshire's bleak border with Lancashire. In total, Penny Ghent, Ingleborough and Wernside are more than 10,000 feet high. And today, Lee is joining hundreds of fell runners attempting to scale all three in a morning. This is a sort of a, a annual mecca for a lot of serious fell runners uh, throughout the country, and it does attract some sort of people from overseas as well. And it is it's known as the Marathon of the Mountains. I'm ready for it. Um, I've done quite a bit of training um, over the last couple of months. Um, so I'm looking forward to um, sort of getting ready and getting out and setting off. Go! It's a risky sport and this year's race will almost certainly have casualties as the runners take on this rugged landscape. There's inherent risks with anything we're doing in life, but we just do it, you take the risks, it's, it's, it's being new when we get out, we enjoy the outdoors, we like to push ourselves, but uh, there are times when it goes wrong, um, and that's um, sometimes when the Yorkshire Elmonds get called. Thankfully, Lee isn't among this year's casualties. He finishes the 25-mile route in a very respectable four hours and 36 minutes. I don't know. I'm really tired. I'm going to be really sore tomorrow, I'll tell you that. But it's not long before Lee's heading back to the Three Peaks. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? Yes. Uh, he's had a bit of um, a blackout fit, and we're halfway up again. Hello. OK, cheers. Bye. Helimed 99 is flying to the forbidding slopes of Penny Ghent. Oh, what's up on left with no articles? It's uh, clear and normal and fuel 961. Yeah, desk from um, Helimed 99. We're listed at um, 0820. Paramedic Al Day is a mountain rescue leader who knows the area well. So we don't know what we're going through. Yeah, no, he didn't say what it was. You know. Right, if anybody fancies a wager, I, I'd like to bet that um, this person we're going for is attempting to do the Three Peaks Challenge today. <laughs> Al's hunch turns out to be correct. A competitor on a sponsored walk for a heart charity is in trouble. Yeah, 9-9, we'll see you, Vila. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, it's um, a 53-year-old male who is currently conscious and breathing. He 
had had some form of seizure. Well, the NSO is telling about nine, and we'll shortly be letting down uh, on uh, Penn again. Pilot Elaine Hunter must find somewhere to land on the rocky face of the peak. On the nose now. Yeah, that's, that's it. it that's it there, yeah. Any close station, Helibed 99 message. Go ahead, all over. Yeah, right, the uh, patient, um, we've located him. They're just above the uh, ledge um, on the ascent. Yeah, Roger, correlation on the mind. Walker Andy Bulging had almost reached the top when he was overtaken by a mysterious medical event. Hello, sir. Right? What do we call you, sir? Andy. Andy, I'm Lee. Andy. So, Andy, what, what happened? Got to about there, I suppose. Yeah. And just thought, I can feel it, I can feel the blood pounding. Right, OK. So I sat down and promptly passed out. His mates did their best to help. Been walking up the hill, been going for about an hour. It was, looked like he was really tired. Um, stopped, sat on the rock over here and then had a fit, fell back, started to shake, was out for about 10 seconds. Lee and Al must try to find out what caused Andy's collapse. And normally I'm quite fit, so okay. I run and walk and everything else. Yeah, all right. Can I just leave you around? We'll do, do a few checks. Yeah. So we uh, attempting to undertake all three today? I was attempting to undertake yeah. all three. Is it, something you, is it something you've done in the past? Not three picks, no. But no. And he's showing no signs of anything serious. But up here, any medical condition can be life-threatening. Falls or hypothermia can kill all year round. Yeah, do we, uh, do we need to, to do a carryover? With some assistance, you'd be able to walk back off. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, oh, yeah. I said the gentleman's uh, GCS 15, he's got no injuries, feels absolutely fine. Probably walk off with assistance. Local paramedics must have stamina. They've hiked 2,000 feet up to the casualty. Andy's off to the hospital for checks by land ambulance, but Helimed 99 will shuttle him back down to the nearest road. Their patient is heading for A&E in Lancaster. But reports of another casualty in the peaks are beginning to come in. All right, I'll get bored, look. Slip your jacket off, and it's like we'll probably we can do an ECG then. There's possibly another job I could hear, yeah. called high burst with. That's the far side of Pennygate, isn't it? Well, this is proving to be quite an interesting day already. Yeah, isn't it? The second case is less than four miles away. Air desk at 99. Air desk at 99, we Back at base, it's becoming clear another walker needs the team's help. Mountain rescue volunteers have already reached the walker. She has a very serious leg injury. Any close station, Helimed 99. Uh, Helimed 99, uh, if you're able to land nearby, it would be appreciated, Alan. Yeah, close to, uh, that's all received with uh, visual with you. We will land in front of your marshal, over. Karen Birch is 41 and already in the care of a rescue medic. Hey, how's it, all right? She was raising money Good. for the British Heart Foundation. Her shattered lower leg is causing great pain. Yeah, she's, she's gone forward, hasn't she? She's, she's yeah. done that and it's popped out forward, hasn't it? So. Right, yeah, we'll cover it up. We'll get some pain relief, then we'll, we'll, we'll see, take it from there and stuff. Hi, Karen. I'm Lee, paramedic. Yeah, okay. I'm now. Are you another three peaker? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Hey. You got further than the last guy. You didn't get up to pen again? Yeah. All right. Yeah. The slippery track up the peak caught her out. For Mountain oh. Rescue, it's a familiar story. It's been a very busy morning. It's the last of the season, and um, yeah, people are doing lots of charity raising events. That uh, last night there was a lot of. Uh, wet weather so as you can see from the ground it's really really slippy oh it's proper like casualty now <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those places you wouldn't go in it holby it's always a massive disaster it's a bit like um what's it called in frost you wouldn't go for a walk in denton woods either no, would no. you i'll buy a house in midsummer can I get no, to exactly. <laughs> if laughter's the best medicine karen's getting the right treatment but if they're going to get her off the peak she'll need something stronger Karen, on a scale of one to ten, where would you place a pain here in the moment? Eight. About an eight. Right. I'm gonna give you some morphine, okay? Just come with a few side effects. A bit of euphoria, a little bit out there. Seen transport, don't you? Where it sinks into the carpet. It's not like that. 
her injury could have lifelong effects. And a serious infection is a real risk. Ground paramedics have driven a long way off-road to join Karen's rescue. Right, somewhat unexpectedly, the ambulance has turned up. They've obviously done quite a good job getting up this track. I think it's one of our four-wheel drive ambulances. So. But being carried or driven down the peak would be agonising. You all right, Karen, there? Is it easing at all? No. Right, it's an hour's drive, so we'll take her. Are you cold? Pop the hood right over and pop her head. That'll, that'll, you'll get a lot warmer that way. Flying her to a trauma unit will mean she'll be treated faster with less discomfort. She had quite a lot of um, pain with it, which we've managed to sort of get on top of with some morphine and some paracetamol. It's going to be sort of um, easier, more, probably more comfortable for if we um, fly this lady over to um, the um, nearest hospital instead. Ready, brace, and lift. It's time for takeoff. There you go, Joe. Nice one. Ow, ow, ow. All right. Someone's touching my tie. That's me. Her walking companions will have to complete the Three right, Peaks challenge without her. You need to finish. You're down enough sponsorship money as it is. <laughs> with, her, with her bailing out, you need to make sure you get it finished. We're just going to fly around to Dr. Dell's all day out. Yeah, cool. Listen to the crew. I haven't personally got a problem with that, to be fair. <laughs> I could do some breakfast first. It'll take 10 minutes to fly Karen to hospital in Lancashire, a sad end to her attempt to raise money for a good cause. Head S99 is lifted, reaching Blackburn. Crow 2 from Halloween 99, thanks for your help today. We'll see you again soon. X rays will reveal how serious her injury is. weather at noon. It's going to be a warm afternoon across North Yorkshire, but there is a chance of a shower in a light east. It's the first sunny weekend of the year on the East Coast. Hello, it's the ambulance service. Hello, the woman here was on the beach, was screaming for help, trying to pull what looked like a man on the floor having some sort of very heart trouble or something. Uh, what's the address of the emergency? Uh, I don't know the address, but it's Runswick Bay Beach. Yeah. On the beach. Dispatcher Jane Stubbly is scrambling Helimed 99. I'm going to set 99 off on it, obviously, because of running distance. We just uh, make sure they keep resources running, though, because obviously, we're just landing on beach, it can be a bit dodgy. Couple of tower, Helimed 99 Alpha is ready for departure to the northeast. Helimed 99 Alpha, we'll let your discretion. Surface wind 17010. The Topcliffe Airbase is 25 miles from the casualty. 12 minutes flying time for paramedics Tony Wilkes and Lee Greenwood. No, no, just for info, Tony, um, Coast Guard are going to deploy a unit as well. They're heading for the towering cliffs north of the seaside town of Whitby. It's a remote area. They're near the ambulance assets, uh, showing about 25 minutes away at the moment, so it looks like we may be the first ambulance to pass it on the sea. Just over two minutes to run. With hundreds of holidaymakers lying on the sands, finding the collapsed man won't be easy. The beach is um, full. Yeah, as I was there. And that's just slowing down in case it's just around the corner. They see it to be probably in your one o'clock, Steve. There's a, that, there's a vehicle on the sand. We're going to need Coast Guard to clear that part of the beach. Yeah, I think there's somebody there now. Yeah, yeah. Look good to clean. Yeah, they to clear yeah. the beach, isn't it? Yeah. Good. If it's a very, very sandy beach, then um, sand can be blown up, so we've got to be careful uh, that we don't want to be blowing sand into uh, uh, people who are on the beach already. Uh, Ed S from Hellebed 99, uh, we've got visuals we've seen, um, currently um, speaking to Coast Guard, um, I'll look into land. Over. Coast Guards have reached the casualty, but there's a problem. The tide has turned. Uh, what do you reckon here? Are we a, I'm not sure. We're actually, I don't think we are above no, the waterline. The waterline's there with us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. Tony won't have long to examine his patient. In the water, what, 10 or 15 minutes, something yeah, like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. So he's actually been in water. Left the water. Stefan Babesco is on holiday from his home in Derby. He'd just come out of the water when he collapsed. Right, so basically, an episode of feeling dizzy. Been in water for about 10 minutes. What have you been doing just paddling in water? No, went for a full swim. Just as you sat down, how do you feel now? Almost 100%. OK. Just put your hands out. Just hold them nice and still. Okay. There, I can, there is a slight shake there. I can feel right. That. But no, you don't feel like weak in one side or anything like that. 
Stefan's 60, but he's fit and he's a strong swimmer. You had anything like this happen before to you? Yeah, never. It's a medical mystery. Tony suspects a stroke or heart attack. Just do a quick ECG, just cover all the spaces and uh, yeah. take it from there. Pilot Steve's keeping Helimed 99 running. If there was a technical problem here, the chopper would be swamped by the sea within the hour. We're just going to do a more comprehensive heart trace. Just to make sure that we're 100% happy there's nothing going off. All right. Sure, yeah. Stefan's heart trace is normal and there's no sign of a stroke. Tony lives on the coast himself. He's a keen surfer and he suspects the sea temperature is a factor in Stefan's collapse. Nothing showing up, it's abnormal. So we're happy that he goes to hospital by road. There's no reason for him to come with air ambulance. Uh, I've got a feeling it's the fact that he's been swimming for 10 minutes. He said he, he doesn't normally go sea swimming. And maybe cold's got to him and a bit of sort of tiredness. But he's just brought on a bit of a spell of dizziness. Whatever the cause, Stefan is going to hospital by road. He has recovered from his collapse and the air ambulance will return to base to wait for a more critical case. Ambulance service, is the patient conscious? Yes, he is now, but he was GCS three when a doctor got to him. At Air Ambulance Headquarters, Dispatcher James is listening in to an emergency call from a medical team covering a show jumping event. He's bright as in his 70s. He's came off the horse, landing on his head. He wasn't conscious when the doctor got to him. Hey, old mate, go on for you. Paramedics Tony and Paul are heading to Richmond in North Yorkshire. Flight time, five minutes. The patient was knocked out when he fell and hit a fence. Uh, at one point, there was unconscious. Apparently, now we've regained some consciousness. So they're going to pick this patient up and uh, take him to the uh, nearest uh, major trauma centre, which is uh, up in uh, Middlesbrough at James Cook Hospital. Yorkshire's farmers rarely retire. Many are still working well into their 80s, and they keep up with their hobbies too. Oh, there's no horses in them horse boxes. I'll let you shut down here. Yeah. Hey, that's from now now. London, I'll see. John Coldbeck is 74 and the oldest rider in the event. Now he's confused and less than amused. I don't feel as well. I've had enough on the head. Can you just let me sit up. Can you let me sit up, please? How you do? Rebecca, uh, course doctor today. OK. Um, we've got a 74-year-old gentleman fell off his horse in the show jumping arena. OK. Um, directly hit his head onto a, a wooden plank. He's quite agitated. Head injuries can cause agitation. Paul must decide if John is just uncomfortable or the fall has caused bleeding in his brain. Hello, John. Hiya. Yeah. My name's Paul. Mm, right. I'm on the helicopter. Well, right. Okay. I don't want to ride your helicopter now. Well, I, I know, I don't but... trust your driving. Hey, I'd not be driving no. it anywhere, mate. No, <laughs> no, no, the pilot no, might be flying no. it somewhere. There's more helicopter crashes now. My horse is still safer than the helicopter. Come on. <laughs> Whilst Paul may sympathise with John's views on safety, he's not likely to share them. The thing is, what we need to do, though, John, is have a good look at you, don't we? And then decide the best course of action for you. Well, if you let me sit up and walk about, that'll know. I, I know, I, I appreciate what you're saying. I'm sweaty like buggery in this stuff. I know, I, you, I, I'm, I'm, so, I'm not surprised, yeah. yeah. Not a problem. John, tell me what's happened, sure. then. You tell me what's happened. Hey? You tell me what's happened to you today. I don't exactly know what's happened, actually, no. Right, OK, I've so what can out. you remember? Can you remember being on your horse, I'm assuming? He's a little bugger, that great horse. He's very quick. Right, OK. It's clear John's memory of his fall is a blank. You banged your head and you've been unconscious. OK. The well, problem is, obviously, we need to make sure that you've not injured your neck or your back. I wouldn't have known. If you hadn't told me, I wouldn't have known I'd bang my head. No, no, that's fair enough. But that's why we need to be extra cautious. John's a real veteran in the saddle. He's already been round once, so I saw him earlier this morning as he went out on his earlier horse. Um, so no doubt he'll be kicking himself. He's already saying he's going to drive himself home, but uh, I suspect that won't be the case. 
Can I just keep your head nice and still? Paul must you, check for signs of a head injury and for symptoms of damage to his spine. Any pain there? No. Any pain there? No, no, no. Okay, so you've got no pain there? No, no. And no, no pain no, there? No, no. No, no, no. Okay. We're going to toes in your right foot. Yeah, and the left foot. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You can feel me touching you there. Is that the same as touching yeah. you there? Is that the same as touching you there? Oh, you lost me, girls. Um, He's not the most cooperative patient they've ever had. Let me get out of this thing and walk away, please. God, I'm sweating like buggery. Hey, that's too tight. What the hell are you doing? I haven't said. Only x-rays can rule out a life-changing injury. The main concern is his age. He's obviously uh, quite an elderly gent, although relatively fit, obviously, if he's, if he's at a show jumping. But he will need to, uh, probably scanning at the hospital, so he does need to go. And if it's not with us, it will be with an ambulance. Uh, if he starts refusing that, then it must be to plan C, and I don't know what that one is. John needs to go to hospital, but he's adamant he's not flying. You're not taking me to hospital, are you? Well, I think you need to go. Really? Because you've knocked yourself out? I can drive myself home. All right, the thing I is... I do not want to go in the helicopter. All right, well, listen to me. I'd rather go in an ambulance than in a bloody helicopter, to be honest. Right, OK, yeah. give me two seconds. Yeah, James is a DCA allocated to this job. Uh, patient is adamant he doesn't want to fly anywhere. Uh, he's one allocated, still showing 12. Yeah, that's great. If you can just um, not stand him down, time being, mate, please. John is going to get his way. We've got a land ambulance coming yeah, to pick yeah. you up yeah, yeah. and probably take you to Darlington. All right. You get groups of people that, that are quite stoic. Farmers are classic ones. You know, we've been to farmers with uh, limbs hanging off who were <laughs> adamant they don't need to go to hospital. Um, and probably this type of sort of sport is the same as well. Most of the time they won't need to go to hospital, but on this occasion he does. Hey, you stand yeah. me up on my feet, let me lose me off and stand me up on my feet. Bloody right. hell. It'll take longer by road, but the patient's wishes must come first. And Helimed 99 will be returning to base with an empty stretcher. If he needs specialist treatment, he may need to be transferred 25 miles to the hospital the chopper was going to fly him to. Luckily, John was diagnosed with a minor case of concussion and he was allowed home after a period of observation. He's now back in the saddle. The four passengers of the chopper that crashed are recovering well. But Les, who was in the front passenger seat, did fracture his spine and his sternum in the impact. The last thing I remember was a loud crack in the thumb and then the windscreen disappearing. And I remember seeing the ground come up. The next thing I knew, people were trying to lay me down and I was objecting because it hurt too much. I do remember somebody saying, he just come out of the helicopter accident. Do you feel a bit nervous about getting into another one? I just said, not all, and let's get off to the home where I won't get rid of some more pain, really. Rufa John, who fell 30 feet, sustained a major head injury and underwent emergency surgery at Northern General Hospital. He still lives with the effects of a brain injury. Sabina. Cyclist James was reunited with his partner Sabina in Leeds General Infirmary. Have I broken my back? He's still recovering from two spinal fractures and a broken shoulder. Her injuries were less serious. Both the charity walkers rescued from the Three Peaks recovered well. The event raised a five-figure sum for the British Heart Foundation. Doctors discovered the sea temperature was a factor in Stefan's collapse. He made a good recovery.